Hi, Chris with RC Worst here, and today I'm going to walk you through selecting a grinder pump. When looking for a grinder pump, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the wide range of prices and seemingly em endless number of options available on the market. This video will help you cut through the competition and find the right pump for your application. When shopping for a replacement pump, many people often replace their pump with the exact make and model that was there before. In a lot of cases, that's okay to do. To determine if that's the right move for you, consider how long the pump lasted, as well as how much the replacement pump is going to cost you. I'll include a link in the description below to an article I wrote a while back about how long your pump should last as a reference. So what if the pump is discontinued or no longer available at the time that you need it? Well, the best option, of course, is to pick up the phone and give us a call. But for all of you do-it-yourselfers out there, or anyone wanting to know the ins and outs of what's going on behind the curtain, here we go. The first step in selecting a grinder pump is to familiarize yourself with the ins and outs of the application. The minimum information that you will need to know to make an informed decision is, what is the source? Number of toilets, is this a public or a private application? Will there be fats and greases? Essentially, just understanding what is going to be introduced into the application. Is there a chance that the pump may come in contact with anything that may damage it? Most grinder pumps can handle the occasional feminine hygiene product, rag, prophylactic, what have you. However, the, these pumps are not intended to be used in chopper applications where their primary goal is cutting up non-human waste. These pumps are intended for human waste. So in all applications, you want to, of course, avoid introducing those things, but of course, sometimes it's unavoidable. Additionally, another thing to consider is how frequently does the pump need to operate and for how long? And finally, what you're going to also need to know is what are the system head's requirements? Now, you might have said, wait, what was that last part? Well, if you're not familiar with pump head, check out our video in the description for a simple explanation of how to calculate this. Once you've familiarized yourself with the application, it's time to go shopping for a pump. Our goal here, of course, is to find the right pump for the job, a pump that's best suited for your specific application, and pumps are generally not a one-size-fits-all. So let's talk for a moment about what it means to find the right pump for the job. Now, the right pump for the job will offer a balance of upfront costs and long-term life cycle costs, including maintenance and repair. In general, a more expensive pump should translate to less problems than a lower costing pump. Too often, I run into the scenario where a person thinks that the more money that they spend translates to a better pump, and that's not always the case. Optimize energy efficiency by balancing energy consumption with reliability. Maximize the overall life of the pump. So let's take a look at some pumps and discuss the various features to look out for so you can gain a better understanding when shopping. So we have three different grinder pumps from three separate manufacturers on the table today. We have a Hydromatic pump, a Zoller pump, and a Bar Mesa pump. All three high-end grinder pumps, all three quality construction. And ironically, when it comes to grinder pumps, there's really a, a, a much narrower field of variance in the things that you're going to be differentiating from when selecting a pump. So we'll look at some of the construction materials as well as some of the capabilities and capacities of these pumps to give you a better understanding of the sm slight and minor differences associated. And oftentimes you've got to pay quite close attention to your application to find the right grinder pump for the job. Starting with the Hydromatic pump, this is an HPGR 200. The body construction is cast iron. It has a semi-open impeller. The impeller construction is a high-strength thermoplastic. The Hydromatic offers a maximum shutoff head of 105 feet and a maximum flow rate of 58 gallons per minute. The discharge size on all three of these pumps is inch and a quarter. The motor speed on the Hydromatic is 3450 RPM at 60 Hz. Again, all three of the pumps on the table do feature upper and lower ball bearing single row construction. 
The hydromatic pump features a single carbon ceramic seal. Additionally, the nice thing about the three pumps that we featured on the table is they all feature internal capacitors, so no control panel is going to be required for any of these options. The cutter design on the Hydromatic utilizes a dual cutter design, which uses a cutter ring as well as a rotating blade, which forces things up against the ring and, and dices them up and pulls them through the pump. So you might ask, what does the Hydromatic pump bring to the table that the other two don't? Well, the Hydromatic is offered with two impeller trims to improve efficiency for a wider range of applications, including lower head application where some of these other pumps may struggle. The pump to my right is the Barmesa BGPC202DS. The C in the part number indicates that this pump has internal start capacitors and uh, doesn't need a control box. All of these pumps feature cast iron construction, class 30. Now, when it comes to heat dissipation, cast iron is quite an effective material. When you look at the design of these pumps, it's quite apparent that the Zoller pump, the one to my left here, has an advantage for cooling based on the fact that these fins are here, and these are going to help direct heat away from the motor. The Bar Mesa pump, as well as the Zoller pump, feature a Vortex-style impeller. This recessed impeller design prevents material that pass through the cutters from plugging up and coming in contact with the impeller. It's an added benefit for improved clog resistance. Oftentimes, a Vortex impeller is going to be a little bit less efficient than our Hydromatics semi-open impeller, but that's, that efficiency is sacrificed at the expense of improved handling capabilities of solids and stringy material. The Barmesa pump features a cast iron impeller, contrary to the other two pumps on the table, which offers a higher level of impact resistance. Of the pumps on the table, the Barmesa pump offers one of the highest heads, but one of the lower flow rates at 43 gallons per minute and a maximum shutoff of 108 feet. The Barmesa also offers a dual seal configuration, which is slightly different than the other pumps on the table, and comes with an optional moisture sensor. The moisture sensor will sense moisture when one of the seals has failed and allow you to repair the pump before total failure. It is important to note if using the optional seal failure sensor, a control panel is required. When we take a look at the cutter design of the Barmesa pump, we can see that it is actually quite similar to that of the Hydromatic pump in that it features a two cutter or a dual cutter design and will function quite similarly. All of these pumps are intended for residential wastewater and sewer as well as some light commercial applications. One of the biggest advantages with the Bar Mesa pump comes in the high-end construction quality and materials at a fraction of the cost compared to the other manufacturers we've got here. The third pump we have here today is the Zoller 820-0004 model pump. This pump has a, a shutoff head of 107 feet and 46 gallons per minute, which is quite close to the other two pumps. They're all basically right around 105-ish feet and about 50-ish gallons per minute. Um, and you'll find that's relatively consistent among two horsepower high head grinders. So the things to look out for is more in line with the cutter design that suits the needs of your application as well as the other features, construction materials and components used in the pump that kind of accentuate the finer points of your application. Interestingly enough, among these three pumps, the Zoller pump, though it has these cooling fins, actually is only rated for operating in liquid temperatures up to 130 degrees. The bladed cutter design on this pump allows for improved cutting ability by reducing the total cutting surface area and allowing the available torque to be focused on a smaller surface area of the blade rather than the quite opposite approach of the other two grinders that we took a look at. Now the disadvantage is less cutting surface area which may result in faster dulling and makes the pump more prone to plugging in the long run, but 
if inspected regularly, you should, shouldn't have any problems. If you're in the situation where you have less control over what materials are going to be flushed down the toilet and introduced to the pump, then the Zoller grinder pump may be better for you, strictly because its cutter is able to apply more force to the things that it's cutting so it's able to chop harder objects essentially, but it may require inspection from time to time to prevent it from getting plugged up. In conclusion, all of the pumps featured today are high quality grinder pumps that will truly stand the test of time compared to other similar products if applied correctly. I hope this video has offered you some insight into the things to consider when selecting a grinder pump. I want to thank you for joining me today in another rcworst.com video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more great content. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service department, leave comments, or even check out other videos on our channel. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.